Hi everyone, now in the fishing video I just recently uploaded uh, on YouTube I was fishing two flies and the main fly or the fly that caught the fish really was the waterhound blower now I didn't realise I actually haven't got a video on the actual waterhound blower uh, I've got variants of it I've got a dry fly and I've got a tinkara version so I'm going to be tying the, the, the original one now the other thing I'm going to be doing as well, I'm going to show you here, this is uh, another one, but this is using the large, the remate, the sort of larger feathers uh, that are on the, the waterhound wing. And the main reason I'm doing that as well, I mean, there's these fish just as good, uh, I've caught as many fish on these, is that uh, I'm running out and I've got very little feathers left, the smaller feathers. So I'm obviously. It's the best way, I mean I've done it for years anyway, I've used the larger ones and they work just as well. And I'm going to show you how to tie both. Now, hook, uh, this is a size 12, this is a full mill, it's an all-purpose medium, it's a medium wire hook. It's a, it's a good all-round hook, it's good for dry flies, good for wets, it's good for what, nymphs, it really works well. Now, the other thing I'm going to be using, I'm going to stick to a traditional silk, but this one is one you can really buy quite easy, it's the Alley Silk. Uh, the 100 dash one there is basically the, the code, I think, for the the, the spool. Uh, but the colour code for the, I'm using, is 214, which is a like a primrose yellow. I don't call it that, but uh, that's what I'm classing as a primrose yellow, which is the original colour used. Now, first thing I'm going to do is wax the salt for a start. Just run the wax through it. But it's a good, it just works as well. That's what that fly's tied with. It's tied with this. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm just, just slightly short of a head length away from the height. We start the salt there. We work my way down, but on the way down, we remove the waist. So, I'm in line with the pointed hook. Now, you could come a wee bit further, it's up to yourself. I'm just tying short, I like that style. Now, the body is just the usual, this is a mole fur, traditional mole. Now before I pluck it from the skin, I'm going to make sure the thread's waxed. Plenty of wax here, because I'm going to use the, the wax to basically stick the, the mole to the actual thread. But before I add the mole, I'm going to spin the bobbin anti-clockwise to this basically flattens the thread. If you want to spin it, oops, bumped it there. Put your, your vice to the side or your hook to the side, just turn it if you can, and then spin it anti clockwise. The thread will flatten, you'll see it. Once you see it flatten, then basically that is rub it, or you can put a wee bit more wax on it, but just rub it with your finger. Uh, that just spreads the wax. And then you're going to use the thread to spin it back, and that will like a dubbing twirl, it'll hold the th it actually holds them all really well. Now, <coughs> excuse me, the, what you're going to do here is just pluck it. You want enough to just, just pull the, the dubbing off. You actually want to pull it off because it actually blends it a wee touch as well. Now what I'm going to do here is just lightly tap the, the mole onto the thread. You want to spread it, don't want it too heavy. So it's worth having some heavy dressed because I've got one of so them lightly dressed, heavy dressed, they will work. Now you're looking for a good inch uh, material and dubbing so along the thread to get all the way up. Just at the X on, the excess there. Now to spin it, you have to tighten it back, the thread back up. Now what I do is I put my finger basically straight out from the hook, 90 degrees from the hook really, then I spin the bobbin, because I don't want it to bounce the, th uh, the dubbin off, so you spin it so it tightens up, you keep going until you'll see it start to go. You can encourage it a wee bit by spinning it as well. Now I'm just going to take away some of the excess. It doesn't catch every fibre, but it will catch a lot. 
And then it's just a matter of winding up. I like to try and get sort of some sort of taper in it, so a wee bit loose here, so just keep your fingers well away from it and you can tighten it up. You want to see the yellow thread through it. It gives that yellow olive type, yellow grey blend, which gives you a nice olive. Yeah, I've got a couple of the smaller feathers lying on my desk, so I've got one here. First thing I do is this water hen. Just remove the fluff at the base. I'm going to use my hackle pliers just to locate the tip of the fire the feather. And just draw back what I want. And I'm going to trim it to a length that I can actually enough to tie it on. It's a small delicate feather, but it's strong enough when it's on. Look, look, Two to three, at least three turns to hold it on. Come in with your hackle pliers, these are very light hackle pliers. And then what I'm going to do here is slightly to draw back the fibres. Face of the hackle, the front of the hackle towards the eye. And then you just want to wind. I'm using up the whole hackle here. One turn in front of the other. Cross your thread when you've cut it in. I usually go a couple of turns. I usually like to fold back the stem, there's some dubbing on my thread here, I'm just going to take it back. It's going to build up the head a wee bit. Now, you can break off the stem, didn't do it, but just leave it, I'll get it. I'm saying that, I'll go back in and get it. I usually like to break it off. But in this case it doesn't want to break, so I'm just using the hackle pliers to hold the stem out from the feather, from the fly. I'm going to whip finish. Now the wax is on the thread, there's plenty of wax there, so there's plenty of grip. Now a tiny wee bit of dubbing on my thread here. I'm just going to, going to watch it. I'm just going to take my time and remove it from the thread here. I thought it may move out of the way, but it's followed my dressing. It does happen sometimes with the wax especially. You just have to be patient about it. There we go, slide it up, tighten the thread. Just gonna use these this wee scalpel blade here. And there we are. And that's the water hen blower. It's a lovely wee fly. Now I'm just gonna get a very a nice light. This is a varnish. Now you don't want the, you don't want it to drift onto the feather, you just want it to touch the the head, there we are. It's enough to make it last. And there we go. Now you'll not get much better than this once this starts to get into the water. Yeah, you'll get this, it'll start to taper back like this. You get a lovely teardrop shape in the, the fly, which gives it a really nice nymph like look. Then the fibre moves extremely well. So there we are. That's the water hen blower. Now I'm going to show you how to use up some of the larger feathers, uh, fibres, especially when you're running out. I mean, I am running out, so, but the, the fly will still work. So, I'm going to wax my thread again. Another hook. Now, you want to, if you want to debarb your hook, I usually do it uh, on the water, but anyway, you, just sque you can squeeze the barb uh, shut if you want to do a catch and release before you even tie the fly. And there we are, you can see the barbs flatten down. So head length will be again. I want to put some thread down first and then come back up. Now I've got one of the larger feathers here, a really big feather. Take away the fluff and the thicker fibres down the base a wee bit. I'm going to lift out these fibres which are they're really too long. You're going to try and line up the ends, just bring them sort of 90 degrees and then tear them away. You'll get two flies out of this feather and then what I like to do is then roll these fibres. Just roll them. The ends that's where it was connected to the stem are all nice and straight, they're down here. So just turn this round, you want to tie it forward to the eye. You want a length that's probably from the point of the hook, or just slightly by. So 
look at the area where you're going to tie in, which is there. Tie that forward. Just encourage the fibres round the shank, just using your finger and the thread. Come around with a couple of turns here now. Before I go any forward, I'm just going to check that I've did that. Just going to open these fibres out. I mean, it's not going to be the best looking fly, like the first one I just did. It's not going to be perfect, but this will still work. And just work your way down. And you cut away the very ends of these fibres. It's a wee bit, wee bit heavy. Just carry on down, tidy it up. A little tidy. You got a nice taper, as you can see. Just wind your thread to the point of the hook. And the same what we did with the, uh, the mole again. We can wax the thread well. Plant the wax on it. I'm going to spin the bobbin anti-clockwise. Just put the thread to the side. Or the hook, sorry. We get some mole. But just lightly tap it on. Just use your finger, just tap it onto the thread and then it will stay there. Make sure you get plenty of wax so it will. You don't need much, you don't need a lot. Spread it and then hold, put your finger at the very end and lift it so, so it comes straight away from the shank and towards yourself. Spin the bobbin. You've got to do that to stop the, the bobbins bouncing a wee bit and it would knock all the dubbing off. You'll see it starting to go. And then it's there you are. Just, and then we can wind this up. You can, as I say, you can rub it like. And I'm just going to open it out a wee bit. Get a nice shape into it. This will help keep the the hackle open. Let's go back here. Just to stretch it a wee bit. It gives you a different look at a fly. A bit up in there, take it up. Now what I'm going to do here, which is quite unusual, the hair dryer, I'm going to blow the fibre back. Just blow it back. So encourage it back with your fingers. You can see how it's sitting. And then you want to basically take your thread to the front, a couple of turns. And then, obviously, make sure you wax your thread. Now you can put a wee touch of varnish. If you don't want to do the varnish, and just put a wee touch onto the thread. And then, what finish. And there we are. As I say, it'll not look as pretty, obviously, as the one I just dyed. Uh, so you've got this one, it's well open, but once that goes in the water you've got that tapered back, much like this. And uh, it's a good way of using up the, f the larger feathers. The fibre slightly darker in colour, but that's fine. That's just, once it's in it's okay. So see, once you've had a fish either, this from the point, that the dropper can be a bit more movement. Uh, because it's a wound hackle, but the, you'll be surprised how well these catch, and I've had many a fish over the years uh, with these type of flies tied with the, the larger fibre. And it is a good way of using up these big feathers that's further up, and uh, instead of throwing them away. I wouldn't do that anyway. Uh, but anyway, there we are. And that's the water hen blower. Uh, great fly, you saw yesterday, caught plenty on it. Uh, great fun to fish, and uh, when things are hard going, you fall back in these old patterns and you will always catch. So thanks for watching, until next time.